YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps and welcome to another episode in my embellishment series. We are working again with the jumbo paper clips and I am pleased to offer this tutorial. It's been a long, ooh, it's been over a year since I first shared my jumbo paper clip bows and I have promised you guys over and over again a tutorial. Well, it's finally These ribbon bow paper clips are fabulously versatile. You can bake them in different sizes using Oh, a plethora of different types of ribbons and you can use these for all sorts of things. If you saw my tutorial on making my reefs I made last year and then you saw me use these paper clip ribbon bows and take a look at this one. Love it! <laughs> Once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. Now I will link my paperclip embellishment series and you can see how I use these jumbo ribbons or jumbo paperclips before. They come in different colors. I first saw these at Tuesday morning, but since then I have found them at TJ Maxx, at Marshalls, and my favorite color is the mint. I don't see this color as often, but TJ Maxx and Marshalls, they do get them in quite often. I also shared a video <laughs> of 101 bows. <laughs> Some of you may have saw that video. Some of the bows are just bows, and then some are on paper clips. So if you want to check out this video, I will show you well. how the back of the bows look. In this video, I will be sharing the tutorial on how to create the professional paperclip bow. If you saw my Christmas tutorial video, I share the cheaters method, and I will share that method at the end of the video. But just wanted to give you a glimpse of how the back of the bowls do in the next video. Look. We're going to make smaller paperclip bowls for planners and journals and cookbooks and embellishments using ribbon in this size and these paper clips you could pick up at Daiso. Now you're looking at two sizes and I really do like these because they're not as big as the jumbo paper clips I'll use in this video but they're a lot bigger than your standard size paper clips and so these are the perfect size for your planners and journals and things like that. And I'm going to spray paint these different colors. Once again, these are at Daiso. You could pick up a box of metallics and then this silver color I'm in this size. Bow it all's version two and three bow making tool. Now I absolutely love this tool. You see, I have two. <laughs> if you have one version, I mean, you probably don't need the other. I got version two over a year ago and I got version three in November of last year. I'm not gonna offer an overview of the tool, but I will link a channel that I absolutely love. I cannot think of her name right now, but I learned how to use this tool by watching her videos. So I recommend that you do the same. Now, if you don't have this bow at all tool, you can use any tool that you have that offers a vertical um, type peg. You can even make your own. I do have a small bowl making tool, but I don't know where it's at. The great thing about using the bow at all tool is you get a lot of different pegs. So you can create different layers and different sizes. I'd like of to bowls. first demonstrate a basic concept in bow making and it's called the figure eight. I'm gonna do the best I can to get you to, or help you understand how to form a figure eight. It's really not difficult. Once again, I do recommend that you watch the bow at all videos. That's how I learned how to make the basic bow. Though I taught myself how to make the ribbon paperclip bow, everything else I learned, I learned from watching their videos. I'm using the Bow It All version two 
and hopefully you can see where I have my pegs. Now, if you know how to make a bow, feel free to fast forward to the timestamp you see on the screen right now. To help you understand this concept a little easier, I've added washi tape to one half of my ribbon. The other half is just ribbon. I've done this so you would know what side of the ribbon I'm using to form my loops and also to make that knot when I've the ribbon is complete. my ribbon midway and I have it flushed against the two back pegs like so. When you make your figure eight you're only using your working hand. I'm right-handed and so my right hand will do all the action. The left hand it's just going to hold the washi side of the ribbon and remain stationary. But for demonstration purposes, I will let go of the washi side of the ribbon just so my hand don't get in the way. Take the right side of the ribbon and place it right in the back of the left back peg. Both ribbons should be kissing each other like so. I'm gonna take my non-washi ribbon, loop it around and place it in back of the middle peg on the right. Do the same thing to the middle peg on the left. Do the same thing to the front peg on the right. And then finally, do the same thing to the front peg on the left. Hopefully you can see the figure eight. Keep in mind that my left hand was stationary. It held the washi side of the ribbon. My right hand did all the looping. So far, I have created a bow with three layers and one loop. One loop because I took my ribbon around each peg one time. I can continue to add additional loops. Sometimes, however, your ribbon ends are not the same length. If that happens, simply pull on your non-washi ribbon and you could see the washi side moving. Do this anytime during your first figure eight because it's easier. Ready. We're one step closer to making our paperclip ribbon bow, but we first have to make that locking C knot. I had a problem with that. It took me a while to learn how to make it. And I think, well, I know I know how, and hopefully I can show For you how to make it learning well. purposes. I'm not going to do anything fancy. Just going to give you the basics right now. I have my washi ribbon in my left hand. I'm going to take it and bring it up. Take my non-washi ribbon in my right hand and form a cross like so. Take the washi ribbon and bring it under. And I'm going to let it go just so I can bring it all the way under and through like so. The next step is to switch the ribbons in your hands. So I'm going to put my non-washi ribbon in my left hand and put my washi ribbon in my right hand, like These so. These next steps were most difficult for me. Though I was making a knot, it wasn't the locking C knot. And hopefully the washi tape will make it easier for you to form that locking C knot. I'm going to use two hands, but when you learn how to make this knot, you'll only need one hand going to form a loop and you see the washi ribbon on the right going to bring that washi ribbon under the loop like so the step that you need to do is to switch the ribbons in your hands like so 
and then pull your ribbon and then you'll have that locking C Let's knot. do it one more time. Switch hands, pull and tighten. I'm not gonna tighten mine too tight because if you form a true locking C knot, you can't unknot your knot. Show you how the back looks. My ribbon is bulky, so it's hard to see the C, but it's there. Let me show you the locking C knot with this ribbon. Ooh, do you see that C? Uh-huh. And if I were to tighten this one, you might see it a little better. Just a little bit better, but that's definitely a locking. This is how the finished bow looks. Now it's messy. I was not trying to create something cute. I just wanted to give you the basics. My center part is too thick. I normally fold it when I'm using thicker or wider ribbons, but this is how it looks. I'm gonna share a secret with you. The ribbon that I use. I am a Costco girl. I love Costco ribbon. And if I share it with you, how many of these jumbo spools of ribbon that I have, <laughs> somebody might contact hoarders and have me committed <laughs> to that show. So I'll keep those details to myself. But I love to use their jumbo ribbons. They're, well, they come in different sizes. I have a lot of the 2.5 inches, but what I do as you can see, is cut it down the center. Or you could do it in thirds or fourths, depending on what width you're using. And I love that because it frays. And because it frays, it will give a shabby Some of the ribbons look. I have used in my video. Actually, I think I've used all of these and some of the bows I shared. But you get an idea of the different sizes, the different widths. I get most of my ribbons from Costco, although I did score last year during the holiday season at Sam's Club. These two gigam ribbons came from Sam's Club and they come in 50 yard spools. So you get a lot of ribbon. You can buy them with or without the wire. Great deal at your Costco or Sam's Club because you pay about six bucks for now one Now it's spool. the fun part. Now that we know how to make a figure eight, and locking C knot, it's time to merge those two techniques together with this next technique. And after doing that, we shall have a paper clip ribbon bow. I'm using the same ribbon, gonna form my figure eight. I have four pegs this time. After you have formed one loop around each peg and you have your non washi um, ribbon to the left with your washi ribbon you take your paper clip I love these jumbo paper clips and that's what I'm using now it don't really matter if you have the long part in the front or the short part in the front but you're gonna take your paper clip and let me turn it this way and stick your paper clip through all of the ribbon. The clip will turn, that's okay. The next steps are similar to what we've done before. Make the cross, except I'm gonna fold my washi ribbon in half because I don't want a wide band down the center of my ribbon. I'm gonna also take the folded ribbon and put it inside the paper clip. Now, <laughs> I tried to tilt it so you can see it, but every time I do that, my ribbon comes off the pegs. So I'll try it this way. Take the washi ribbon and place it, fold it, 
right through the paper clip like so it's still going to be a little bit wobbly that's okay remember we switch hands form the loop switch hands again and tighten to form that locking C knot. Now, before you tighten it too tight, you do want to, let me see, you can take your time and position your paper clip in the center if you like. Sometimes it just happens when you tighten and pull, sometimes it don't. So play around with it. This ribbon, I'm getting a lot of fraying. That don't normally happen, but you can clip that off. Or you can do like I do and leave it. I love how that looks. Okay, let's take a look at the back. Ooh, can you see the locking C knot there? Mm-hmm, I see that Our see. final paperclip ribbon bow, one that's similar to this adorable bow, isn't it cute with the bumblebee colors, yellow and black? This bow has three layers and bow tie number of loops per layer. I'm starting off with this Costco ribbon. It's an inch and a half. It's about a yard and a half long and it has no wire. I'm gonna have a tail on my right side of about four inches and I'm gonna first form one loop around all these pegs. Now I recommend that you watch the segments as many times as you need to until you feel comfortable with these steps. I have formed one layer. I have went around each peg one time. I have enough ribbon to go around each of the pegs again. And this will form my second layer. You do the same thing as you did for the first layer. Now I have formed two layers and I don't have enough tail left um, in my left or right hand to form any additional loops. And so I'll go ahead now and make my cross If I just confused you, watch this segment. I need to switch ribbons in my hands, form my loop, tighten. Before I tighten it too tight, I can make any adjustments. You can move the center band. You can scrunch your ribbon. And when you're done, you pull and you tighten. If you have a hard time making a secure knot, you may have added too many loops because it will get more difficult the bulkier your bow is. So I recommend don't tighten until you are sure your bow is complete. There's different techniques you can do for your tails. What I do is take my right ribbon, fold it on top of the left, and cut at an angle. I'm not sure, oop, okay. Okay, so this isn't straight, but I'm not gonna worry about that. <laughs> now this is what I like to do. Take my tails and wrap them around a peg. Wrap it all around, and this will give our tails some curly action. Release it off the pegs and that's how it looks before you puff it and fluff it and all that. You could leave it just like that. Oh, you know what? I forgot to add the paper clip. So this is one ah! time I'm happy I forgot <laughs> because I wanted to demonstrate the cheaters method anyway. Um, this is how the bow looks. Once again, you can keep it like that 
But if you want to fluff it, just fluff it out. You see my back layer has two loops, my middle layer has two loops, and my front layer has two loops. But take a look at my curly tails. Isn't that adorable? I love it. Alrighty, so to attach this paper clip, you use hot glue. Add hot glue to your paper clip. Attach it to your bow. Hold it in place for a second. And to finish off the bow, you can add a button or any number of embellishments to the center. And then I'm going to add another button in the center there. And you could leave the back like so if it's not too messy but I like to add these one inch size sequins to the back I thought I had some black ones but I'll use the white one for now and it it just completes the look to me I could add a charm and hang that from that hole but I just love this I'm not really feeling the button though. <laughs> I might go back Thank and add you something. Thank all for your patience this last year. I am so happy to finally share this tutorial with you. If you have found this video helpful, don't forget to like. As a matter of fact, you can like this video right now. Give me a thumbs up. Also, right now is a great time to subscribe. Go ahead and do that right now. Feel free to share this video. Feel free to adopt any of my ideas. I only ask for proper credits. Do give shout outs and do link back to this video. Well, once again, I want to thank you for watching. And as always, blessings.